Hi there Swarmers, lovely to see you again. And if this is your first time here, welcome. Don't be shy, say hi in the comments and hit that subscribe button. We're trash talking today. In the Northern Hemisphere, the weather is finally warming up. Maybe it's soon time to hit the beach. The beauty of the horizon, the foamy waves crashing to the shore, the sand smooshing softly under your feet and the tiny pieces of plastic scratching between your toes. Wait, really? Well, yeah, I'm afraid that with every visit to coastlines right around the world, you'll be struck by the presence of plastic. Perhaps it's big items like single-use water or soda bottles that people leave behind. Or maybe it's a small piece of a toothbrush that's travelled with the current over 5,000 miles over the last five years from when it fell off the trash barge. Our oceans and all of the creatures living in them are in trouble. Before we dive into that, let's take a little look at history. The guy who invented synthetic polymer, John Hyatt, way back in 1869, was hailed a hero. He had produced celluloid, a material which would save the animals. Yes, I know that sounds odd, but hear me out. Ivory and tortoiseshell were being used to make hair combs and billiard balls, among many other everyday items at the time. If celluloid was used instead, elephants and tortoises had a few less reasons to be hunted and killed, which was a great thing. Then in 1907, completely synthetic plastic was invented by a guy called Leo Buckland. This product, called Bakelite, would allow us to beat Mother Nature. It was totally conformable. It was waterproof, resistant to degradation. It had a high strength to weight ratio, and it was cheap. It would protect us, our food, and our belongings from the elements, and it would last forever. It took a little while, but about 40 years later, our obsession with all things plastic began and commercial production of plastic exploded. Just 10 years later, we got the first report of plastic waste being noticed in our oceans. Suddenly, some people had the realization that that whole lasting forever thing might not have been such a great idea. Now let's take a short lesson in geography. There are 11 places on the planet where the ocean's currents create a spiralling effect, or vortex. There are stable, high-pressure systems in these locations, which means that there's very little wind and slower moving waves. These areas are called gyres. Whether you knew it was a gyre or not, you've likely heard of one of these places, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. But in fact, five of these gyres are areas where plastic waste becomes trapped in a pool of mess. Trash is carried there on the ocean's currents, and then it's difficult, but not impossible, for it to leave. Most of the plastic that ends up in the open ocean, millions of metric tons of the stuff, is small. That's because about 50% of plastic which lands in the ocean sinks, like a PET water bottle as it fills up with water. And most of that which floats actually gets beached pretty quickly. Recent research found that it happens usually within a month of it being leaked into the ocean. Obviously, this still isn't great. It can ruin an area's necessary tourism dollar and be destructive for the local wildlife. But today, we're focusing on that which goes far out into the ocean. So once the movement of water removes that bottle cap, which was barely on, and the bottle sinks, the cap is free to start its journey to a gyra. It might take years. And with month after month after month of the sun beating down on it and the waves crashing against it, it's brittle so it starts to fragment and become smaller. We therefore don't see islands of trash in these gyres. We see vast areas of soupy, murky ocean with trillions of small pieces of plastic floating at varying depths from the very top to a few feet under. So there are two major issues. Number one, the tiny size of the plastic means that ocean creatures and marine birds can easily ingest them. Microplastic then goes all the way up the food chain, including into humans. And number two, there's no simple collection method. We can't simply strain the water or scoop the plastic up. There have been billions of dollars invested into an array of tech to try to do just that, but it's minimally successful. One of these such organizations is called the Ocean Cleanup. Although we see immense amounts of trash having been collected and are supremely grateful for that, it's a tiny percentage of the total amount of trash there. This last collection by the team, which are the most financially backed innovation in this space, takes the amount of trash they've removed from our oceans to a staggering 206,000 kilograms. That's a big number in anyone's book. 
but that's only 216 metric tonnes. And although it's clearly difficult to count, the OECD, Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development, have most recently estimated that the ocean has about 30 million tonnes of plastic. So we wholeheartedly applaud what Ocean Cleanup is doing, but sadly, they've removed less than 0.001% of plastic in our oceans and 0.2% of plastic in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. How is it even possible that there's so much plastic trash in our beautiful environment? Well, we produce about 460 million tonnes of it every single year. And nearly three quarters of that is immediately waste. Single use plastics like water bottles, food packaging like yogurt pots, plastic coffee stirrers, toothbrush packaging, cigarette butts, plastic grocery bags. You get the picture. In 2019 alone, 22 million tonnes of plastic waste found its way into the environment. And of that, 6.1 million tonnes got into rivers, lakes and the ocean. More recent research suggests that each year, somewhere between 9 and 14 million tonnes of plastic ends up in our oceans. So while the tap of plastic production is still on full blast, all the cleaning up we can do will never be enough. Think of it like an overflowing sink. Mopping up the spilling water as fast as you can is a must, but the water flow must simultaneously be slowed or turned off as well. It's imperative to take both actions. It's not an either or. Another way of thinking about this analogy is that the tap is actually where the ocean trash originates. Most of the time, the source is the rivers of the world. A recent study has found that 1,656 rivers produce 80% of the plastic waste which ends up in our oceans. That's in stark contrast to a study of 2018, which suggested that 80% of ocean trash came from only 10 rivers. It stands to reason then that if we're talking more than 1,500 rivers, they aren't all going to be wide, gushing things. In fact, most of them are very small local rivers. And when we look at those rivers, the top 10 for emitting plastic are in Asia. This is where 60% of the world's population lives. Low to middle income countries have much less effective waste management. And terrain, climate, land use and distances within river basins all contribute to the chance of plastic pollution in rivers leading to the ocean. As you know, we're solutions oriented here in The Hive. So let's talk about what we can do about all this plastic trash. The best and most effective solutions aren't always some great tech invention, it's us. So firstly, use less. Say no to single use plastics, find alternatives. A reusable water bottle, a reusable coffee cup. Yes, there's plastic in disposable coffee cups. A canvas tote bag, don't use plastic produce bags at the grocery store. Use metal straws or carry a folding silicon one. Stop smoking. Use reusable period products. Yep, there's plastic in disposable pads and tampons. Use loose leaf tea. Yeah, you got it. There's plastic in tea bags. Switch to shampoo, conditioner, soap and moisturiser bars. Or refill a bottle at a bulk grocery store again and again and again and again. Use laundry soap nuts or refill a bottle over and over and over. Use beeswax wraps or a vegan version instead of cling film. Switch to toothpaste tablets instead of a tube. Use a bamboo toothbrush. Stop chewing gum or choose your brand more carefully. Oh, you didn't know? There's plastic in 99% of them. Get a reusable travel cutlery set for picnic. Or literally grab some cutlery from your drawer and take it with you. Ditch the disposable plastic razor and use a safety razor and shop secondhand clothing so you're not adding to the customer demand of synthetic and polyester, i.e. plastic, clothes. Secondly, you can help clean up what's already there. Whether that's at your local park, along a waterway or at the beach, this is super important and helpful to remove the risk of the trash ending up in the ocean. Thirdly, you might have heard us say this once or twice, write letters. Petition to your local elected officials to introduce bans on single-use plastics and restrictions on those things which aren't technically considered single-use, like food packaging and PET soda bottles. We are choking our planet on plastic waste. So let's all do more to reduce our plastic use and help preserve the wonder of this beautiful planet. Thank you so much for joining us, Warmers. I hope you've learned something new today to help you on your journey to being your most sustainable self. Stay happy, stay safe, and stay sustainable.